Connie, known as ConnieGG316 on Instagram, moved to the UK from Hong Kong, learned a new language, new skills, because she was pretty much alien to art making until five-ish years ago, and is now rocking the art world with her delicious looking food. I mean art, delicious looking art. It's not real food. Now, would you be surprised to hear that she thought about quitting art altogether multiple times? I guess we're all humans after all, huh? So how does she keep going and going so strong? Please join us today as we talk about why you don't need to know how to draw to be an artist. You really don't. Staying true to your art passion when feeling like quitting, how art skills are transferable between different mediums, and tips for dealing with shaky hands. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etcherlab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Manya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. Connie, Connie, Connie. Okay, let's... Um, I want to hear everything. So let's start okay. by taking a time travel to back when you realized art was important to you. When was that? Wow, that's a big question. I think it dates back to quite many years ago. If you want the very beginning, maybe we can talk about primary school. I, I wasn't like... Uh, I like art, I like drawing and stuff, and pe- uh, my teachers liked my work, but it was nowhere near anything like really like genius thing, but just a passion about drawings. And then I just had a very normal education and non-art education, so my art lessons and in about when I was 15, which was pretty normal. Wait, where were you? Because now you're in the UK, but where did you grow up? Uh, in Hong Kong. So all the way, I had my education up to university level in Hong Kong. So yeah, I just had a very basic art education and I did not pursue art at all. Mm-hmm. I did science in high school and then business wow. in university. And I had in further education uh, in something else, totally unrelated to art in the UK. And when, <laughs> so it is really a personal hobby like thing instead of like a formal learning of uh, art or history and everything. And I started uh, watercolor in. When I was in the university in Hong Kong, I just bought a little box of watercolor. I found it look cute and I couldn't draw anything at all. Nothing. <laughs> it was frustrating because I looked at the box and there's a simple instruction to draw a basic scenery oh. thing. And I tried to follow it. It's just the basic basic. And it was nothing like I have ever done before because like when, when I was small, I used colored pencils, pastel or poster color. That gives you the instant effect of something or color. But when it comes to watercolor, it's just so different. And I don't know, I didn't know how to control at all. And I don't know. And then just on and off because I was so busy with things in life, maybe studying or finding my first job. And then I just abandoned it <laughs> in the back of my drawer. Oh. Yeah. And then I don't know why. Maybe I, ah, let me think. I bought books about painting and watercolor. And that's how I started again. Just keep looking at those pictures and how look at the things. How long after thing. you put the watercolor kit down? I think maybe two or three years, really. But I like I like buying books then. Not now. I'm not buying <laughs> much books and many books anymore. But I I like collecting books mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And so I every time I go to bookstore, I may spend 
15 minutes looking at all those like how to draw how to sketch how to do watercolor books and I get everyone I liked to my home yeah so before you move forward so you loved art since you was since you were really young so primary school like six seven years old something like that yeah, but you probably. followed everything but art. So the, the passion, like the art bug was always there. Did you completely drop any everything art related until you saw that watercolor kit? Um, yeah, I, I have not taken it very seriously for, for maybe the 20 something years of my life. It was just, oh, sometimes, oh, it's fun to, to draw something. I've never thought about doing it as as a job or as a career until quite late okay. uh, in life. So yeah, it has been always on and off. And then maybe I move on a little bit. Then when social media came in, like Facebook and Instagram, and I started posting my work there, mm-hmm. and I started accumulating some followers and people who liked my work, it was amazing because it has always been kept to myself or my family or my friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just a completely new level of like sharing my work and art to other people. How long so ago that's was how that? Like 10 years ago? Not so long. Actually, wow. Instagram is not around for that long. Oh, I so think. for you, it was Instagram, not even Facebook. So it was pretty recent that you started sharing. Actually, Facebook, I got a page as well, but I abandoned it because it was too much to, to maintain two platforms mm-hmm. and like similar content, but different different poses. So I, I only focused on Instagram. I mm-hmm. think it was about uh, five years ago mm-hmm. that I tried to be more serious about doing it. And um, Actually, before that, I was even more serious about knitting Mm-hmm. and doing crafts so i made this sweater so i i, Wait, what? I decided to wear it today my god so if you're watching if you're listening to the audio only version hop over to our youtube channel where connie <laughs> is doing a great job at modeling a sweater that i was actually looking at your sweater while ago i'm like oh that's one sweet sweater i should ask her where she got it now i just realize i can't get that anywhere else you're amazing yeah. i had no idea you knitted i actually crafted before i was painting so I was crazy at well crafts and I learned it myself wow. as well so uh, I've got sewing machines there so. <laughs> oh my god they're, they're collecting that sorry <laughs> so um when I was doing crafts I really love crafts I do everything like knitting crochet or embroidery sewing is a new new hobby um, but one day I was thinking yeah I love knitting I really love knitting but I can't make a career career out of it that easily. Yeah, I think there are ways now, but back then I was thinking, I can't be knitting things and sell them because it takes forever yeah. for me to knit one thing and let alone being fit or good because you never know until you finish. So it can't, I can't work out how it it's would work. It's not sustainable. I, for you to actually make well, a profit out of it, it would be, have to be really yeah. expensive items. Then Yes, exactly. Yeah, you would it's, pay it's... 200 euros for a sweater while you can get one for 20 in yeah. shops. And exactly. you may not see the difference, but it takes so long to make one. So it's never really sellable. And then I was thinking maybe painting is better <laughs> because it takes much shorter time to produce something than knitting. And then maybe I think, uh, yeah, maybe I can try, but not really thinking about that in mind that I'm going to make a career out of it. But I spend time to just practice and do what I like. So um, slowly, I, I ch- uh, gradually uh, move on to like, working full time on it now so this is like kind of my journey okay so it was the moment that you picked the book you picked back that art book that you started to get into a habit of creating art and was it watercolor Oh, that's a good question because I've never never think about I've never thought about what what is the point of like yeah maybe but 
maybe also I brought a new set of watercolor somewhere <laughs> in time uh, in yeah. the UK, which was, I, I, I think I haven't got my watercolor set in a drawer in Hong Kong with me in the UK. So I brought a new one here. When did you maybe move that to also how. I think 2013 or somewhere, somewhere. Okay, in 2014. Okay, it's yeah. 2021 now. So it's like seven yeah. years ago. So you moved to the UK, you gradually picked art as a hobby yeah. and then the hobby started taking a little bit more time and it was, looks like it was very natural. That's why there was not like one point where something shifted because you were slowly yeah. getting into the habit of heart making, art making. Then social media yeah. came five years ago, so that's 2015, 2016. And yes. that's when you started posting and take us from there. Yes, I moved to the UK because I'm taking a course, right? So I was busy back then anyway, so mm -hmm. it was super intense. But like whenever I have some little time to take a break, I may be painting, I may be knitting, I may be doing all sorts of different things. So there wasn't like a particular moment in time that I think, yeah, that's it. And so, but slowly I realized that when I, uh, <laughs> ah, there was a time when my Facebook was dedicated to painting and my Instagram was dedicated to knitting and crafts. But slowly I, I crossed them over a little bit and I found Maybe art is good on Instagram as well, or maybe even better than craft. So it starts to take over my craft, and you oh, wow. can't see a lot of crafts on my Instagram now. Yeah. So that's why this just took over quite naturally. And I, I still do, but I maybe share them in my story. I had sweater. I I had to scroll down for an eternity to see a sweater. Yes. <laughs> and it's yes. gorgeous, by the way. It's a gorgeous. It, it's a jacket. It's beautiful. Like oh my Thank god. You. Yeah, I had no idea that you knew it. I never went that far down your Instagram to see it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's loads of things. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, there are. <laughs> anyway, not not to defer from the art process. So yeah. okay, so art took over. It was watercolor first, and I know a lot of other mediums came into the mix recently, which I would love to hear about yeah. that. So yeah, let, let's just talk a little bit about that. So watercolor, okay, first question. Has your <laughs> focus always been food? Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, yeah, this is a very interesting question. And I, I don't know why. I think even like for my very first few watercolor paintings which was a fail they were food as well maybe some cookies or some cakes I just love them I think it it captures the happy feeling for you to oh. eat something nice eat something sweet like it reminds you of the feeling of something sweet in life and you enjoy that moment even though you can't be eating that all the time for me yeah you shouldn't so, <laughs> you can but maybe it's not a good idea yeah people always say oh you make me hungry again in a midnight I, like po posting honey, i ate before this interview and i'm starving already just to look at your feed how is this possible <laughs> this is dark magic you should partner with restaurants they would be rich on your account rich i tell you but yeah please continue I, so yeah, and it just grew, and I I kept doing it and doing it and doing it, and I think uh, there's an interest like for drawing food in me in the beginning, and also before social media age, I looked at some blog. I remember there's a girl, I think it's a girl or woman in Paris, maybe from America. She just loved being in Paris, and she like keep uh, going to different restaurants and dessert shops to try all, all those macarons, hot chocolate, those, all those beautiful desserts, and she paint watercolor. Mm -hmm. And she was my hero back then. Like, oh, wow, I hope I can paint like her one day. And I try to learn from her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it was really a special thing because there wasn't social media 
you can't really find artists that mm -hmm. you like that easily. It's like now it's one click away. You can search for the hashtag food illustration or dessert illustration. You can find thousands of them immediately. Like, But back then, you can't really find people you like. Uh, you can go to bookstores to look, but there wasn't really many like focus on food. I think still life is more popular, like draw, draw some fruits, bowls, and that sort of traditional thing, but not really like cooked food or desserts. Mm -hmm. So it was, I think it was her who inspired me a lot about painting food. But like but then when, when people are doing blog, you don't really have to do it every day or mm -hmm. every week. So it just comes up as and when they like it. So um, that kept in my mind, deep in my mind. So I, I continued this, this journey. Mm -hmm. And now I can see this industry or this uh, niche career or niche food illustration has bloomed on Instagram that I I can see new artists like every day which is quite interesting and also a, a little sense of competition and stress because okay. there are so many people doing very similar thing with you mm -hmm. and you always feel like oh how can I really uh, still be compatible or competitive yeah. with them with everyone is progressing like life speed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it's so when overwhelming I was stuck, and intimidating yeah if you look at my like if you scroll so low you can see my very few uh, first few works on food illustration mm -hmm. if you compare them with my work now of course you can see some improvement very different. <laughs> yeah. yeah and mm -hmm. i can tell you like when people are starting their instagram account now uh, they will be at similar level at my current work. So there's little room for you to start like me, to grow like progressively for five years. If you start like that, you may not have a place to stand at all. No, True. So it's hard. It's a... Well, you mean, you don't know. I mean, don't forget, they are opening their accounts yeah. now, but they have might been practicing yeah. for longer, or that could be yeah, a new account, yeah. or they could have deleted sure. old work. You, we never know. Sure. But yeah, it is very sure. intimidating. And yeah. still, I love that you just kept at it, because that's what you love. You love painting food. And yeah. I cannot look too much at, at this, because I'm like, God, I eat afterwards. But... So I'm not encouraging any people to try, mm -hmm. but as a, like, as... And someone who has been in this field for, for a few years, mm -hmm. it's just feeling a little bit like stressful nowadays than a few years ago. Yeah, I think. And, yeah, I, I, I do think that's true. And I, I do understand what you're saying because I think there's a little bit of that in every art field because there are always more people doing what you're doing. And it's hard to think of yourself as, okay, so where does my value lie? And something that I wanted to ask you is, even though you felt that, you didn't give up. I mean, it's one thing when we're doing this for a hobby, it looks like the pressure is off. That's not where the food in our table comes from. That's not our main income. But when it is your job and it is for you full time, it's very yeah. stressful. For, so why did you keep at it? instead of yeah. just doing something else, even art related. So what made you stick to it? Yeah, it is a difficult question. Sometimes I do think a lot about it, like, oh, do I still want to do it? Uh, because Instagram is such a inter funny thing. You, you never know how it works at the background. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you spend days working on a painting that you think, oh, this is going to kill it. This is going to break it like but it, it sometimes it doesn't and mm -hmm. it it do it just makes me feel a little bit disappointed or sad or am i not good anymore you got mm -hmm. you get some self doubts and sometimes you feel oh my work is went into vain <laughs> like the time wasted that sort of yeah. feeling but really actually uh comes up to me more regular than you may think mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it it's always good to maybe take a break 
I I have recently really like not thinking about or、oh, how to do it in other like killer pose or something like that. Just to think about、oh, what I want to do and look at art first that I love, but not necessarily necessarily works well on Instagram.、Mm-hmm. And I think I've changed a little bit, like from pushing a lot. Of love on Instagram to maybe have my own pace of producing work that I really feel it. Oh, I I love this. Oh, I have to do it. I have this urge sometimes. So yes, I maybe I saw a food that is so beautiful, like the dessert. I've just made like the the strawberry jelly. I find that oh, that would be very challenging for me. Like I can do a lot of texture in just、mm-hmm. one. One work, and yeah, I had that urge still, but for the long term, I think I need to think about what I really want to do, or what what kind of career path I can pursue,、mm-hmm. like with the aid of social media. But you need to get job in real life, like usually <laughs> off social media, and yeah, I think I can still find a way to work. Like this time, I partner with Acha,、mm-hmm. like going to do some podcasts and workshops. I have never actually show my face or talking. Oh my god, we have the exclusivity <laughs> in your face! Oh, this Because, is this should be commemorated with. Yeah, it's my breakthrough actually because、wow. I'm not quite used to public speaking or、mm-hmm. talking. Because English is not my mother language, I have fear, a little bit of fear in me for so long. But I think this is the time that I can come out of my comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. So I'm quite happy so far. Like for me talking for fifteen twenty minutes nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> so I I'm quite proud about this and yeah,、mm-hmm. teaching it. Maybe my way to go. I'm thinking,、right. because I have been like doing some teaching,、mm-hmm. uh, not regularly, but like one to one or via、uh, Zoom class, and it builds my confidence a little bit. Yeah. So I'm quite happy because like I can get feedback from my students very personally. When you post on Instagram, people say, "Wow, this." Is Beautiful, and still you you don't know that person that much.、Mm-hmm. But if I'm teaching, like we have more connection with each other. I may be helping their specific problems, or I I know what difficulties they face. I probably have it had it as well before because I'm self taught. So、mm-hmm. I find it really rewarding. To be helping others to to、uh, pursue their art journey, it may not, it it doesn't have to be in career, but it, if yeah, it is、right. something that they love to do and they are happy about it,、yeah. or they can make parts for themselves,、yeah. or for their friends, that would be good enough for me, I think. There's, <laughs> I'm glad that you brought that up. I have so many things to comment on it. One is, it. Fills me with joy to see that the reason you took up art making full time, despite going through so many other options at, until you got it art, is because it fills you with joy. And the reason why social media overwhelms you, but still you keep on making what you're making or you're creating, is because still it comes from the heart. It's something you love, and that's how you you're able to keep at it. Because I completely feel you. Because I've been always like. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I'm not putting anything on social media. I need to make something for social media. And I'm like, wait, no. Do I feel like painting? Actually, I do. What do I want to paint? This. Okay, then let's do it. If it goes on social media or not, we'll talk about that later. Because why on、yeah. earth am I even making art? That comes first. And yes. Yeah.、Sure. Social media is secondary to what we're doing. So I'm so glad that's something that became、yeah. apparent to you. Otherwise, you would. Sadly, I don't know if you would get so overwhelmed that you just quit and taking breaks again. Great tip because we do need、yeah. breaks in our lives because we're human beings. We're not machines. We don't just make things on、yeah. demand because we don't push a button and it's all out. So that's、Definitely. awesome. Question for you: What will you be doing in the live demo and workshop that you're doing with us? What will you be teaching? 
I will be doing a stack of pink macarons, mm -hmm. like free stack up. Uh, with watercolor? Will, yes, with watercolor. And um, I think it will take you about 45 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. If you print out my pencil sketch, you save yeah. yourself a, a good 30 minutes or so, mm -hmm. and you will be guaranteed a like a happy macaron that you won't feel like oh no I can't sketch and I can't pay I, I have friends telling me that they hate sketching they mm -hmm. want to just color it because that frustrates them and it they felt like it stopped them from making what they want to make so I will be focusing on coloring techniques that you can do wet in wet with confidence mm -hmm. And we do it slowly and I try to make it quite realistic mm -hmm. that it looks like three wow. stacking onto each other. Yeah. I, I can actually show you because I have yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exclusive behind the <laughs> scenes for all our viewers. Dun, 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 dun. So, oh, it's over like this. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm not saying it is like super like high level of water complex watercolor, but I think it will be it will make some beginner very happy for them to paint a stack of macaron. Exactly. I think in the beauty of it is you don't need a lot of tools, you don't mm -hmm. need a lot of colors. Mm -hmm. I have to only use three. Mm -hmm. I think you can only use two. Yeah. Like, as a as a minimum level. And you can actually change it, change the flavor if you want. You can have brown or chocolate. I love how you say Green. happy macaron, and I love how you don't say change the color, you say change the flavor. This is beautiful. <laughs> I love how you talk about your art. Yeah, because I it's all about food, it. isn't it? Like pistachio, vanilla, but you are using the same technique as all. It's like you, you use the same method to create all different flavors mm -hmm. you can have different flavors stacking onto each other yeah. you can make a glossary of macaroons like like in those like lottery shop they always give you a poster and different flavors lining up it is never a difficult difficult thing to do but it mm -hmm. looks so cute like you you use a marker pen to write down what flavor it is underneath and uh -huh. if you pay nine or sixteen you can make a very cute little card for your oh. friends or family or you can flame it up if you're happy with it so uh -huh. happy with it so i think this would be fun yeah and it's not difficult right i just a <laughs> reminder that. to all of our listeners if you come to live demo just a reminder that it is a live demo you will be watching connie paint you are more than welcome to paint alongside us but please don't feel like you have to work at the same speed as connie is working because obviously she's been doing this for few years but it will be recorded and you can focus on watching her paint and painting this later totally fine the recording will be available for free this is a free demo you can then if you wish enroll in the workshop and paint it then yes alongside her to create more art and it's great what you mentioned because okay let's change gears a little bit i want to talk about actual <laughs> art making and what's hard and what's not i've never had anyone mention this in a podcast interview before and it's so important you don't need to love to draw or sketch to love art. I adore the idea that you are providing the sketch so people can have fun coloring. And that's a valid thing. You're not less of an artist because you do not appreciate or, you know, or know how to draw. It's totally fine if what you love is color. And same thing, the other way around is, is also valid. You're not less of an artist if you don't really enjoy or like or know how to color. It's fine if you're super like just into drawing and that's super cool as well. So yeah, so is was that always I mean you do draw in, in paint, but was that always obvious to you? Like it's totally fine to do either one or the other. You don't have to do both to be like considered an artist. Yeah, I actually think yeah, it's not a secret that actually many artists for them, maybe the hyper-realistic artists or botanical artists, they openly talked about they trace, they trace mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. or their base drawing, and it it mm -hmm. just makes sense for you to 
like if you want to be hyper realistic,、mm-hmm. why do you spend time on sketching that maybe you can only get to ninety five percent, ninety eight percent, but you can get one hundred percent if you trace,、mm-hmm. and it still takes a lot of skill for you to color it right. Mm-hmm. To make it hyper realistic, so there's still lots of work into that art, even if you trace、mm-hmm. or use other aids for you for the base sketch. And the thing is, it just helps you. It never gives you like even if you if I give you my pencil sketch, I don't necessarily put all the details in it. So you still have to imagine and create those like. Texture yourselves, and you can have freedom creating them、mm-hmm. because this is not a hyperbolistic、uh, macaron. And I do practice like sketching and drawing it like at my own pace when I'm happy <laughs> to do it for myself or something.、Good. It is a it is a different feeling if you sketch or loosely sketch.、Mm-hmm. It's just a different style. For me, like many of my food illustrations or desserts are quite accurate, so I prefer、uh, tracing the outlines first, and then I do the coloring and define the smaller area by myself.、Mm-hmm. So,、um, actually, I think it is still a very happy thing to do because when I when I was Like teaching my friend to to color a little bit, she told me how happy she was when she has the sketch. No,、oh. like she just hated the whole thing because she has to draw. And she 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 told me that oh, I've never thought I can produce anything at all because she can't draw.、Uh-huh. And now, ah,、uh, I I taught her how to to color ah、uh, with very. Thick, thick crayons、uh, uh-huh. to do a stack of pancakes, which is very actually really simple because we can't have lots of details with those thick、yeah. crayons. And she, she was amazed that she she can really make something <laughs> out of, of not, not while、well, not drawing fully. And I'm、yeah. I'm wondering I'm I'm sure that a few of our listeners. Are wondering about copyright issues and is it really okay to trace? And I'm like, you can take your own photos. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you can take your photos like the things you ate and the dessert you just had, or you you must have a lot of good photos in your like your your travels.、Mm-hmm. And I I strongly recommend those because like they are your memories.、Mm-hmm. You can draw something to commemorate that trip that you had, all the happy memories. So it is fine. And、um, actually, if you're like, I'm not sure. I'm like really correct to say this, like, but if you are practicing at home, it doesn't matter. Like, if you find something that you love, you you can practice it because you're not for you're not selling it. Exactly. You just keep it for your own use, for your own happiness. You don't have to worry about too much about what、yeah. you're going to draw. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah, if, if you're, you're doing posting, it just for yourself, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Go ahead that, if that you're posting. You. Yeah, if you're posting or you you start to worry about those things, then you need、mm-hmm. to keep it. You you need you may need to think a little bit more about it. Like, you should credit the、uh, photos or something like that. They should be okay. I can't guarantee they're not. <laughs> they will be happy about you using the photo. But if you credit them, it's like a good gesture to make acknowledgement that oh, I pre I appreciate your photo. So.、Exactly. I'm using it. I hope you are happy that your photo is being created in、yeah. in another art form, and maybe it helps marketing a little bit for you as well. So hopefully that's a win-win situation. Yeah. And if you are selling something, then you need to be even more careful. Of or、course. if you are doing for commercial、uh, work, so that there's a lots of different level.、Um, Consideration, but、mm-hmm. if you are purely for your own enjoyment, don't worry about it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally fine. And I love what you said about tagging the photographer. And yeah, great marketing opportunity there. I mean, I if if someone were using my, I'm not a photographer, but I'm imagining if someone were tagging me because they were using my photos to create art, I would be overjoyed. I mean, we did talk about that in a podcast interview we had with Nicholas Holman. He said. That someone grabbed、um, a piece of art that he made and went to the place 
like because he drew a, a, a he made a painting out of a location that you saw on the internet because we were all confined and the girl who lived there printed the the art i hope i'm not coming up with i hope i'm remembering this right but she got the art and she went to the place that he saw on google street and she made a video of herself with the painting there because that's the place that he used as an inspiration it was beautiful i think it went viral it's so cute and it's like wow it's so nice to see these things yeah. in the world so definitely yeah wow okay yes um about your so you are very focused on watercolor but i know you use other art supplies so is watercolor your favorite i think yeah it has a special quality about it and i may say it's not the easiest medium mm -hmm. really because it's not quite intuitive mm -hmm. approach when you use watercolor while if you're using like acrylics although I haven't tried it, or grass, grass, they are like opaque, so you get what you, you see. Mm -hmm. Watercolor is it's not really about you get what you see. Mm -hmm. You have to imagine or try to predict how it will behave. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing is, watercolor is like non-erasable mm -hmm. and pretty much an edible book so it makes it quite a delicate medium but yeah. if you if you feel if you start enjoying it, it it's really a beautiful thing to work with so it is a funny thing <laughs> i love it yeah i have practiced i've been practicing it for so long so I, i'm quite comfortable with it and when i move on to other mediums there are transferable skills like wow. how color mixes and um, it's not really that direct when i move on to colored pencil so it it was a very very new experience for me to use color pencil like autumn or late late last year mm -hmm. and i have to learn a completely new technique to work with color pencils mm -hmm. But then this year I bought myself some oil pastel and I found they are quite similar to colored pencil that mm -hmm. I can use my skill quite directly with uh, oil pastel. But I think everything related to paintings or drawing, you can always find some connections between them. So when you practice enough with one, you can always move on to the other with much advantage than a completely new beginner moving onto that medium. So it's funny and it brings me some like fresh feelings with drawing again because when you do something for so long, you start to feel a little bit tired mm -hmm. and you want to find new excitement. And that's why I'm gathering other other kind of materials. And I think it will grow. <laughs> it will it's certainly great. grow. Wow, yeah. that's a great way to, you know, switching gears to keep the excitement going on. Yeah, that's that's, that's a really great tip. So is there anything in particular that you remember from watercolor when you were starting that was really hard and how you overcame that obstacle? Uh, it was hard because like I, I looked at my old painting, they are always wishy-washy watery not enough color and everything just like mush together mm -hmm. i think patience was very was was very important because you have to wait until it's dry to carry on yeah. otherwise they all mix together and you may not want that or you want that fine uh, on purpose that's fine yeah, yeah <laughs> but of course then, <laughs> so you have to be patient, you, you need to take your time to do it slowly and control your water content. I think that is the key thing for me to control your brush. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different skills that I think they, they come together. You, have, you need to have steady hands, you need to prepare yourself like how you approach each work. You have a question. Yeah, I'm like, to be the devil's advocate, you need to have steady hands if you're doing the kind of work you're doing that is very realistic, I think. Because uh, I speak from experience, my hands are shaky, 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 shaky. I hate it. And I'm still able to make art, 
but nothing realistic like you do i just my the the way i paint it, i don't have to be like super careful with where the paint goes because it's really free i like watercolor because it's so wild and and like yeah. this is the area i want to paint and if it goes a little bit out of it it's totally fine because it's part of what i'm trying to accomplish so sorry i did, did not mean to interrupt you but oh, i'm like no, no, no. just yeah. depending on what so you're nice yes. to know It's always yeah. nice to know what people encounter, yeah. what what they find it difficult, and that how I can help them to to oh, maybe yeah, do better, or just to embrace that. Like I can find you a style that, like, oh, that's fine. You yeah, can have exactly. crazy brushstroke. So there are many ways to work around. Not really an issue, but like maybe the thing you are concerned about, like, uh, if you want to have. Uh, Steady hands. I think how you hold your pen, how you hold, how do you hold your brush, or how you you move your arm muscles, and um, many things can actually help. Like I have tried, I tried to learn calligraphy at certain point. Uh, loads of different kind of interests. <laughs> so that's how, like, when shaky hand is the big no, 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 no in I don't that like area. It. I can't do it. Yeah, um, but they do have drills to 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 practice. Like Ooh. you, you really like making a scribble, like a like an oval shape. Keep mm -hmm. doing it over and over and over and over and over again. You can actually like be better. You you have like you can print out uh, a guidebook like those you have when you were five to just yeah. learn. Learning the alphabet, they have uh -huh. a great underpainting like thing, and you you just write onto it. Wow. So it's the same with calligraphy. Like if you do those for maybe five sheets, I don't know. Yeah, and your hand you gets can, steadier. You, yeah, and you build up your muscle memory of doing that yeah. shape. So sometimes I think it's all built into me that I forget. <laughs> But when I look at other works, at others' work, I can tell, oh, you can try this, you can try that, maybe it will help. And how do you, like, use your brush? Because you you have a brush, you have the teeth, you have the body, you have many different ways to, wow, to maneuver with your brush. So there are ways to, to do better always. So don't worry. But it all comes down to practice. I'm sorry. I told my student I can't help you with things because you have to put your hours in it uh -huh, <laughs> to get uh -huh. better. Of yeah. Course. So that's so amazing. It is, yeah. So there's a lot of science or stuff. That... <laughs> and I thought I would never be able to do certain things with painting because my hands shake so much. And now you just blew my mind telling me there are things I can do to make it better. Like yeah, huh. <laughs> so no excuse. So I love this podcast. I love hosting this podcast. Oh my god, the amount of information I I discovered. Thank you for blowing You're my welcome. mind after making me hungry. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Okay, before we wrap up, we are at a time limit. So before we go, yeah. any piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? I think like if you want to do art for whatever reason, you need to keep yourself happy and enjoying the process. It maybe it, it sounds too familiar to say, but sometimes if you're pushing yourself too hard or You really want to just do certain things, but you forget what you really like in the beginning. So mm -hmm. maybe you you only do it when you have plenty of time, or if sometimes it just like you need to follow your feeling and heart when you create. And I see some people they they are so eager, but I find. They look a little bit stressful hmm. at certain times, so I think, oh, maybe you can slow down, or you don't have to do everything perfect because it's just for you. I keep a little book that maybe I draw quite ugly or not that successfully, or I don't spend loads of time into that book uh, just to get my ideas out for myself, or I want to try that for so long, but I don't have time, maybe I can do a rough version of it. So mm -hmm. I think just uh, don't over push yourself when you try, I, I see. <laughs> 
quite a lot of maybe at maybe we are adults we're not students we when we do something we need to like get it <laughs> when we when we try so what is wrong with me relax. why can't i do this <laughs> like, no it's not good. just relax yeah so i hope that helps <laughs> What subject or medium brings you the most joy, and why? Please let us know in the comment section of the post associated with this episode at etrelab.com forward slash au. That's e t c h r l a b dot com forward slash au. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, simply let us know in the comment section below. If you're enjoying the podcast, please help us keep the show alive. You can subscribe and give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etrelab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. Or if you're more of a YouTube viewer, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our most recent videos. Sharing is caring and every little bit helps. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Until then, let's make more art.